do you have a slow metabolism? In this video, I'm going to explain what metabolism is, how it affects your fat loss, symptoms of a slow metabolic rate, and potential solutions that you can implement. This video has a ton of value and will give you a lot of clarity as to why you might not be seeing the results and progress you originally anticipated for. If you're new here, my name is Alex Mendoza. I help men lose up to 50 to 100 pounds without spending hours in the gym, doing excessive amounts of cardio, following unsustainable diets or lifestyle, or taking unnecessary medication. I teach realistic and practical advice that you can implement to your day-to-day -day life. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I'll be showing you the methods we use to help people like Charles lose 16 pounds in the first week with us, Ange lose up to 57 pounds in the first 12 weeks, Bees drop 40 pounds, and James and Arthur completely transforming their body composition. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is a process by which your body converts what you eat and drink into energy. Even when you're resting, your body needs energy for basic functions like breathing, circulating blood, and repairing cells. This is called your basal metabolic rate, or your BMR. Now, your BMR accounts for 60 to 75% of your calories burned daily. Age, gender, muscle mass, and genetics also play a big role in determining your BMR. Now, as you get older, your basal metabolic rate decreases, which can make it more difficult to lose that weight. A study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows that BMR decreases by about 1-2% to per decade after the age of 20. Now, what impacts metabolism? There are five common influencers. Starting with muscle mass, it burns more calories than fat even at rest. Research suggests that for each pound of muscle gained, the body approximately burns six to seven additional calories per day at rest. Up next is physical activity. The more active you are, the more calories you burn. This includes everything from walking, gardening, to high intensity workouts. Food thermogenesis also plays a role. This is the energy your body uses to digest, absorb, and process food. Protein has the highest thermogenic effect, meaning that it requires more energy to digest. One gram of protein contains four calories, and to digest a single gram of protein, it typically takes one to one and a half calories. So even though you consumed four calories, your body only stores three. Unlike fat, which contains nine calories per gram, it's the simplest to digest and only requires 0.4 to 0.9 calories to process. So for nine calories per gram of fat consumed, your body stores approximately eight calories. Another common contributor are hormones. Conditions like hypothyroidism can slow down metabolism while hyperthyroidism can speed it up. Many things can cause hypothyroidism and we'll dive into a few examples shortly. Poor sleep can also negatively affect your metabolism and hormones that regulate appetite. So by taking these variables into consideration and making small changes in your habits, you're already setting yourself up for success and optimizing your metabolic rate. Now, when it comes to fat loss, a common trend that I see when it comes to clients' previous experience attempting to lose weight are restrictive diets and fast solutions. Low calorie intakes for prolonged periods of time have a negative impact on your metabolic rate. This often leads to slow progression, frustration, and lack of motivation. When you drastically cut your caloric intake, your body perceives it as a threat to survival. In this state, your metabolism slows down to conserve energy, making it more difficult to lose that weight. The Minnesota Starvation Experiment found that the restriction of caloric intake intake led to a massive decrease in metabolic rate. Participants of the study saw a decrease in their BMR up to 40%. And this came along with physical and psychological effects such as fatigue, depression, and obsession with food. Another study published by the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition also found that when individuals followed a low caloric intake for a long period of time, also faced a significant drop in metabolic rate. And this metabolic adaptation can even continue after you go back to normal eating, making it more difficult to maintain fat loss. When calories are dramatically decrease for a long period of time, the body reduces the amount of energy it expends to conserve fat stores. Restrictive diets can disrupt hormones that regulate hunger and metabolism. For example, leptin, a hormone that signals fullness, decreases with severe caloric restriction. This is why you struggle with self-control and might find yourself overindulging with food. So regulating your caloric intake on a day-to-day -day basis is crucial for long-term success. What I see happen a lot are individuals cutting down their calories way too fast to lose that weight quickly and maybe you've done it yourself and you did see rapid weight loss but over time your body will adapt to lower calorie intakes and you probably hit a plateau and you didn't know what to do which left you frustrated with the lack of results that you saw so to avoid this instead of opting for restrictive diets like keto carnivore and paleo follow a 300 to 500 calorie deficit with a balanced nutrition resistance training like weightlifting is crucial to maintain muscle mass and support your metabolic rate i also recommend trying to maintain a normal eating pattern and follow some 
some form of eating schedule to keep your metabolism and hormones regulated and avoiding overindulgence. Now, where I see a lot of people actually go wrong is when it comes down to tracking your food. Most of the times, you're not doing this right or consistently. So before you jump into any conclusions, make sure you track your food correctly. And if you don't know how, I've created a step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly what to do, what apps to download, and how to do it. I'll attach a link to the video in the description below. Now, there's a lot of common myths when it comes to metabolism. Starting with metabolism slows down when it comes with age. Yes, it does, but not as dramatically as you think. Staying active and maintaining as much muscle mass as possible can help mitigate this process. By staying active, eating right, looking after yourself, you'll also be able to increase your testosterone levels naturally, which can also assist with your metabolic rate. You might have also heard that eating small and frequent meals can boost your metabolism. While it can help regulate hunger and energy, it doesn't really have a significant impact on the overall metabolic rate. And now with the sports nutrition supplement market, reaching $23 billion in 2023 and a projected growth of $52 billion by 2032, certain foods or supplements are heavily marketed to dramatically boost your metabolism. And yes, that includes OxyShred. While some foods and supplementation may have a small effect, nothing replaces a calorie deficit, a balanced diet, and a regulated training program. So how do you know if you have a good metabolism or a bad metabolism? The average male requires approximately 2,500 calories to maintain their body weight. There's obviously certain variables that vary from person to person, but by simply eating 300 calories below your maintenance, you should see a change in body weight. As your body changes and adapts, so does your maintenance intake. For example, if you're 400 pounds, it might take you 4,000 calories to maintain that weight. But as you shed these pounds off, you might only require 3,000 calories to maintain a body weight of 300 pounds. It's very important to make adjustments on your weekly average caloric intake based on physical, emotional, and numerical feedback that you gather from a week-to-week -week basis. Tracking progress is very important and this is where a lot of people go wrong, especially when it comes to knowing what to track and when is too much and when is too little. I'll make a video in the future teaching you exactly how to do that, so make sure you hit subscribe. Now personally, based on experience on myself and other clients that I've coached in the past, 1800 calories is a little bit too low and a little bit restricted. For majority, it's quite unsustainable and you should be in a significant calorie deficit by then. I rarely have my clients eat below 1800 calories and when they do it's no more than two to six weeks. The duration does vary depending on a few different metrics such as physical activity, physical and emotional response as well as just adherence and consistency. If you hit a point in your fat loss journey where you're eating about 1800 calories and seeing absolutely no change on the scale for three to four weeks, no change in your body and a continual decrease of training performance, this is not a good sign. Having said that, your caloric intake is also heavily dependent on your physical physical structure. So to all my short kings out there, some of you guys might have to eat about 1600 calories. There's so many different variables that come into play, but if that is the case, I would typically start to increase physical activity. This could mean an increase in step count, training volume, or performing higher intensity forms of cardio. There's so many ways to manipulate caloric expenditure. The best way is heavily dependent on form of activity that you can follow and enjoy. And if you still see no changes, there are three things that I typically do. Starting with introducing a refeed. Now refeed in simple terms is a day or multiple days throughout the week where you eat more carbohydrates to offset the adaptive response. This can help reduce cortisol, regulate hormones, and you might even see your body weight drop the next day. Refeeds can also help replenish glycogen stores in muscle, which can help improve energy levels and training performance. This can really help with progression, especially as calories continue to get lower, helping you build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Refeed days may also stimulate the production of leptin, a hormone that plays a role when it comes to regulating metabolism and hunger. Now, if nothing still changes, it might be time for a diet break. Diet breaks can last from anywhere between four to six weeks. And the purpose of the diet break is to prevent or minimize your metabolic adaptive response. This gives your body a chance to adapt and prevents your metabolism from making adaptations. This gives your body a chance to reset and prevents your metabolism from slowing down. It might even boost your metabolism temporarily. During this process, I typically gradually increase the caloric intake, approximately 300 calories each increment. And this process is called reverse reverse dieting. You can also go back straight to your maintenance intake without a gradual progression. Some studies show no significant differences between the two methods, but to have more control and mitigate additional or unwanted fat gain, it might be a better idea to take the nice and slow approach. So typically before I increase my client's calories by 300, I'll let their body weight stabilize to give me a better reading on their current situation. You might see a massive spike in body weight and that's completely normal. So give it a couple days, maybe even a week to let the body weight settle. I found that going back straight straight to your maintenance intake can have a lot of negative psychological effects, which can lead to uncontrolled eating 
and negative relationships with food. So for a practical and more psychological perspective, I much prefer a slow, gradual increase for myself and for my clients. Now, after you work your way back up to your maintenance intake, I usually sit around there for three to four weeks. The duration really depends on a few different variables like performance, mood, energy, rate of recovery, and a couple of other variables. During this process, you might even find that your maintenance intake is actually higher than before, meaning that you can eat more food and still stay the same weight. This is perfect because you're now in a better position to start your next cutting phase. You have more calories to work with, you have more steps to go down, and you have much lower body fat percentage to start from. Now, if none of those two methods work, it might be a good idea to consult and visit your doctor. Get a blood test done and review your thyroid. TSH, FT4, TT4, FT3, TT3, and RT3 can be tested and checked by your doctor. Without all the unnecessary complications, essentially, this will show you if you have a good or bad metabolism. It removes speculation and gives your doctor the opportunity to let you know if there's anything that he sees outside the ideal range. And in some situations, you might even be prescribed medication. I hope this video gives you a bit of clarity and if you're not already subscribe to the channel where i keep fat loss simple and practical now if you've been stuck seriously looking for help and want results like Ange, bees charles and the hundreds of other men that we help you can click the link below and book a discovery call with me or my team much like going to a doctor or a nutritionist this is not a free service and an investment is required to work with us so if you're not in a position to dedicate financial resources please feel free to continue to watch the content i post on youtube TikTok, and Instagram absolutely for free. Let me know in the comments below what topic you'd like to see next.